Hello and welcome to this pre-recorded episode, which I believe is going to be episode 68 of the Echo Livestream, EBPF and Cilium Office Hours. So we're pre-recording because next week, uh, the ISO Vayner folks, we're all off on a company off-site. So uh, we thought we'd create something for you to watch while we're away. We'll be, you know, on the social media. So if there's anything that you really want to uh you know, reach out about then then please do or leave comments on the youtube recording or in the, our slack all of those things but we won't be live probably now let me introduce anna i'm gonna try and pronounce your surname is it kapuchinska something like that yeah cl- close enough <laughs> kapuchinska. <laughs> yes so anna tell us a little bit about what you do and and for work and what, what you've been working mm-hmm. on recently uh, sure. Uh, hi, Liz. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, I work at Isovalent as a software engineer. Um, I'm working, widely speaking, on observability. Uh, so I'm mostly focusing on uh, our enterprise uh, observability products um, extensions for, for Hubble. And recently, uh, my main focus was uh, the uh grafana uh integrations that's yeah i guess we'll talk about <laughs> today mostly exactly yeah that's why you're the perfect guest for today's show because we're gonna <laughs> dive into some of these uh integrations so um last week i guess it will be two weeks ago by the time this gets broadcast but mm-hmm. recently we were both in detroit for for kubecon was yeah. that your first yeah. kubecon uh it was my first uh in person so yeah, I've been attending like two or three virtually before, but yeah, person person. Pretty different experience in person, though. Uh, right? Yeah, <laughs> very different. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Any particular highlights for you? Anything that you kind of stood out as a fun experience? No, I, I think I think in general, it uh, it was great to meet with. <laughs> People from from the community, uh, people who I work with, and also with other other people uh, from the from the community, and uh, chat about what uh, what exciting things we are working on. Uh, so so yeah, so so that was great. Yeah, it's and, totally uh, different when you get that opportunity to meet people face to face. It's really really lovely. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Yeah. I think I similarly would highlight. Um, yeah seeing people face to face and we had our first Cilium project meeting and we really didn't know how that was going to go we mm-hmm. didn't know if anybody would turn up but actually dozens of people turned up so that was brilliant so if you were there thank you for joining us it was uh, really great to meet you all right so our main topic for today is to talk about the new integrations between Grafana and Cilium and uh, I'm just bringing up the blog post that uh, our CEO, Dan Vendlin, wrote for the Grafana um, blog post. And there's really great um, you know, background here on, on the kind of collaboration between Grafana and Isovalent, the companies, but also Grafana and Cilium, the open source projects. And, and that's really what we're going to concentrate on today. But I definitely recommend reading this, this post to get an idea of you know, the power of what these integrations are going to allow us to do. And uh, Anna was part of the team that were building lots of demos before uh, before KubeCon, and uh, hopefully we're going to see some of those demos. Uh, the one particular that I wanted to walk through is this uh, publicly or public repo Cilium Grafana observability demo. And Anna, did you did work on this one directly? Um, so not not really directly on this one. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, it's it's the, all these demos like use similar um, metrics and and similar tools. Uh, so so yeah, I, I I didn't work on this repo <laughs> directly, but uh, yeah, on on similar things. So hopefully, as we walk through this, even though you didn't work on it directly yourself, you'll be able to help if we get stuck. Hopefully, we won't get stuck. So yeah, we're not going to stop. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I, now, I have um, 
gone ahead and installed basically well everything so let's quickly just walk through that i mean there were some tools that we needed to install and this particular demo assumes that we're running on kind i don't think there's any particular reason why it has to be a kind cluster but i followed yeah. these instructions and and did the same thing uh and there's a whole bunch of different helm repos that needed to be installed then this was the prometheus operator crds so i guess i mean this is something to do with some custom resources related mm -hmm. to prometheus is there anything you can tell yeah. us about those yeah. yeah so i think this this demo uses uh cube prometheus stack so cube prometheus is a project that um uh, collects various um uh, various different projects um cncf projects uh, open source um for observability uh, the, it contains uh, Prometheus, Prometheus operator, uh, Grafana. Um, yeah, I, um, I believe like the, the, the a few uh, the most commonly one observability projects out there. And uh, Prometheus is installed with Prometheus operator. Uh, Prometheus operator um, defines this custom resources um, where we just provide Prometheus configuration that allows us to scrape uh, Hubble metrics, for example. All right, great. So actually, maybe I could even see those if I, I guess, is it? I think we can do kget crd, something like that. Yes, that should that work, training. I think. OK, so it's probably. Uh, um, yeah, I think you, you probably. Uh, yeah, there is an um, alert manager. But basically, the, the CRD is from monitoring CoreOS. Okay. Um, group. Oh, it is provided by Prometheus. And a few down well. here as well. Yeah. yeah, so there is Prometheus one, um, service monitors that find a scrape config for metrics. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right. And I created that monitoring namespace. And I've got Cilium installed here, and I'm pretty sure it will be up and running. Let's just check. Uh, yes, it's all working happily. And we have an Nginx ingress for accessing Grafana. Uh, I've set that up. It does cross my mind that I want to set it up some some point with a Cilium ingress, but uh, that's for another day. <laughs> I, I know that's possible because I uh in fact mm -hmm. Anna you helped me set that up for well you set it up for me for a demo at KubeCon mm -hmm. so, so I know it's possible that's just not what I've got running right now and then we have it's... this open telemetry operator and collector so this is to do with collecting um... traces right yes um this um yeah open telemetry collector in general can well open telemetry is very very big project or like collection of many products but open telemetry collector is um a collector for uh, observability signals and i think i would risk the statement that currently it's mostly used for collecting uh traces mm -hmm. um and uh, exposing them to some tracing backend, back for example, Tempo. Um, yeah, Which... it can be also used to collecting logs and metrics and correlating these signals with each other and like <laughs> doing many more complicated things. But I think it's great. And I think well, we should see an example of that later. So yeah. <laughs> great. And we're going to pass these open telemetry collected information to Tempo, which is one of the Grafana projects. Yeah, Grafana projects for tracing. OK. And then we install Prometheus and Grafana. So this is the key Prometheus stack that we talked about before, I think. Yes, yes. OK. And then we should be able to visit Grafana in your browser, which I have here. I've already logged in, so I don't have to show the, the login step again but it's here and that's I, I've done some port forwarding so it's not actually on port 80 for me but uh, basically this is as far as no I did also install the um, 
these jobs that are generating all this traffic. So we can see a bunch of traffic is happening and that's coming, I believe, from these uh, tenant jobs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a demo app that, that <laughs> we use today so commonly. Uh, yeah, some, some app with uh, load generator. So there's actually some load like imitating user traffic. And I think this is actually a really important point to just uh, mention that there has to be a Cilium network policy with a layer seven policy so that the layer seven metrics get generated, right? Yes. Yes. So we can, let's just have a quick look at that. So there we can see actually a few, quite a few here. Uh, lots of Cilium mm-hmm. network policies, job app. Yes, so uh, well, we have like a blanket policy to allow <laughs> all traffic to, to not block any uh, layer for traffic uh, within this namespace. Right, that's um, this one, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, and there are there is one policy for DNS. Visibility, mm. which makes sense. We want to yes. be able to make DNS requests. And then here's this. Layer and seven egress visibility. Yes. So uh, yes. So this allows um, egress traffic to to world. <laughs> so, oh yeah. There. Yeah. Yes. And here so is one. one. What's this one doing? And this is and this allowing is, uh, us to see. I guess these are ports being used by different demo apps. Yeah, so this is uh, layer seven or more specifically HTTP. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, there we have HTTP rules, uh, layer seven policy, where um, we need to define ports that, uh, that we allow ingress traffic on. Uh, yeah, and this HTTP rule with like empty braces basically tests policy to allow all traffic. And then that means we'll get um all of those layer seven flows and all of those metrics captured. Yes, yes. Yeah. So this is this kind of policy. I think in the name it says visibility. Uh, so it, it, this kind of network policy that is really providing visibility more than any like restrictions because we don't restrict traffic there. We allow all, uh, but but it gives us visibility. Yeah. So I don't think we need to talk about what the different demo apps. I think the more interesting thing is to look at these metrics that are being populated. So this is the screenshot from the repo. And I think we should see something very similar. This is saying Mm -hmm. to find select loader. I think I already have. Yeah, I have loader already selected here. So we can see things like 100% success rate for incoming requests, which are going on at about 0.3 0.3 requests per second. We've got some uh, latency or request duration metrics here. And uh, actually, this looks like this. Is that the same thing, but a bigger version? Like mm-hmm. request duration by source for crawler. Yes. Yes. So I, I believe the, the source uh, here. Uh, what, what we mean by source and destination are uh, workloads, uh, Kubernetes workloads. So in this case, it would be usually deployment. I think in most cases, this app, this is deployment, or it can be like stateful set, demand set, this uh, okay. any Kubernetes workload. All right. And also by des- and this is for the destination loader. So I guess this is requests going from crawler to loader. That seem mm-hmm. right. Okay, so let's increase the request volume by configuring crawler to generate more resumes. I guess that's the, the thing that it's doing. Something to do with job applications, this sample app. Right? <laughs> yes. So I'm going to scale up this. This should scale up the, we'll have a look at this uh, job app increased request rate. So that must be in here. App increased is that request request rate? Okay, so that's increased the repl- re- replicas 
and I'm going to guess that's changed the the frequency. Mm -hmm. So we should see the request rate increase. Uh, where's the request rate? Let's do a refresh. Oh, it's exciting yeah. to see whether it does actually go up. <laughs> there we go. There it is. Oh, yeah. Incoming request sheets up. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So we saw the request rate increased. And we should see the the request rate also increases for the core API destination workload. Let's check that out up here isn't it destination workload of core api yeah it looks like that's yes. gone up at the same time great okay and so what's this doing a new configuration it's going to change the error rate all right so let's apply this Increased error rate. Okay, so it's injecting some error rates at core API by the looks of it. So let's see what happens. I guess this should be. We see yeah, so. Um, yeah, you should have. We have a request by response code, response code there. Here. Uh, yeah, and uh, here we also have. Um, now so this graph is success rate. Uh, maybe it just needs a refresh. Now, if it's changing, if it's injecting. Okay, no, sh no, should we should sh we should see them on core API, right? Destination workload of core API. Okay, something's changed. Oh, I think, yes. I think oh, we can see the small drop uh, in success rate. <laughs> or am I imagining it? Uh, no, you're right. It's, it's just dropped a little bit, but maybe if it needs a... Let's, let's make this update a bit more often. <laughs> yeah, but we can see now the success rate... Um, at the top, we see we have success rate. Here we which, go. Yeah, it's dropped. dropping now. Yeah. Yes, it dropped. And I'm expecting it'll drop a bit more than that, won't it? Yeah. In, um, when you have uh, incoming requests by response code, um, you, I think you can cre click on. Uh, on the legend, or maybe not. The legend for? Uh, for a uh, response code, yeah, this. This? Uh, yeah, I think or if you here? click off, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. that's Yeah, then, then you just <laughs> see only this uh, this response. Right. This is response code, so. Okay, so, so we are now see. seeing some, as well as some 200s, we're also seeing a few yeah, we started, 500s. Yeah, we started receiving 500s. Yes. And presumably before this, this is like the last hour. So, yeah, so I think the, the application by like, by default. Yeah, um, yeah we, we've only just started injecting yeah. these. Yeah. Okay, so we're seeing some uh, error rates. This is going to change request duration. So, I wonder if this is also going to. Do you think we have an error rate and increased request duration? Uh, uh -huh. We should be able to see that. Uh, let's, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Yes. So we should see the request duration going up, which I guess we will see here. Mm -hmm. 
I want to see it go up uh, you know, more. Yeah, it's on the kind of P50 level. It's, <laughs> it's oscillating a bit. Um, but... Go on, demo, you can do yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you um, you can also choose like it's shorter uh, time range because uh, well, yeah like maybe it's here. yeah like thirty minutes or shorter because like the last fifteen minutes oh yeah that's a bit better okay yeah, yeah. that's definitely well I think I think the duration already crept up a bit when we mm. uh, introduced the error rate yeah. Let's have a little look at the. Okay, so it should delay requests with a sleep. Point two of the time, I guess. Okay, so that should. Ah, here we go. That was long enough. Oh, it's had long enough now to see a real <laughs> increase. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like uh, maybe a minute or two delay because first the Helm install always like you need to reload the app so that can take a minute or so. And um, Prometheus is uh, scraping these metrics with like configured uh, interval. Uh, I don't remember what it is in this, <laughs> in this configuration, but usually it would be like maybe 15 seconds. Um, does this can be a minute. So does, it, does this, oh, I don't know what that did. Does this, uh, I don't know Grafana well enough to know whether, so this is the refresh interval for Grafana, but does that affect how yes. often Prometheus would scrape? No, 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 no. How often Prometheus scrapes is configured in this uh, custom resources that, um, that we define. Oh, yeah. 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 So there, there's like a conf configuration option, scrape interval. Um, yeah, I think default would be, Maybe a minute or maybe shorter. But okay. yeah, it's it's usually like in most environments I saw like something. So that probably it explains why there's a little second. bit of a lag for you know where we see these metrics starting to change. Yeah, yeah. It's it's of course like if you configure the Prometheus to scrape like every five seconds, then you will have shorter lag, but then it uses much more storage. So sure. Uh, yeah. So and then this could be pretty cool, the tracing integration. Mm -hmm. So this is talking about the distributed tracing that we mentioned before. And I haven't actually seen this yet, so I'm excited to see what this looks like. I've, I've read a description and I've seen the screenshots, but I've not, you know, <laughs> clicked on it myself. So what's this going to do? We should start to see exemplars showing up uh, as dots alongside the line graph visualizations. So, oh, I guess it's here in the request duration, these kind of dots, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess they might not show up for a little while for all the reasons we talked about before, like yeah. <laughs> and Prometheus. And I guess these exemplars, they're only, they're like samples, if I understand it. Correct. Yeah, so yeah, we, we can talk about what exemplars are. So exemplars is like, um, it's I, maybe not very new, but recent uh, feature in, in uh, Prometheus or like defined in the open metrics standard. And it allows to connect metrics and traces. So two, these two signals that historically were independent, like you would instrument application independently for tracing, for metrics, and just use two different browser tabs to like investigate both. Um, with exemplars, they can be connected. So in metric, um, in metric, uh, metric is a time series. So it's a collection like of data points uh, with labels and timestamps and to each of the uh, individual points so like um a click on single one. single yeah single uh, data point uh, can have 
an exemplar attached to it. So exemplar would be some additional information attached to it, attached to the single data point on the metric, not to, to like the you know, whole scrolling metric, down a bit. but single, single uh, time point. And single point uh, time. tons and, of data, yeah. Yeah, and uh, what this is mostly used for is for attaching traces. So um, when we have a metric increase, that metric increase usually came from like some request, right? And this request might be part of the trace. So if we know this trace, uh, we can instrument the application in a way to, when we are increasing metric, uh, we are, can also add an exemplar to it, which would be this trace. Uh, so yeah, so, so this is like very <laughs> hand-wavy explanation of, of, but I hope this, this uh, gives an idea uh, of what we are trying to achieve there. So we want to connect traces to uh, individual data points in a metric. Uh, yeah, and a trace, um, a trace would be like, a trace shows us the whole life of the request. So right. it shows us uh, all services that the request is jumping between. Uh, it's so if I show... click on this, will this show us? Uh, show hopefully, hopefully. Let's try it. Yeah, so one thing that uh, th there is a lot of like labels. I think it should open like another Grafana tab. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's Amazing. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so here we, we see um, there's, um, we, we jumped to, uh, this is Tempo view. Tempo is like, as we mentioned, Grafana uh, product for tracing. Um, the trace has a trace ID, um, which identifies it. That was this here, yeah. Yes. Uh, and multiple spans. So a span in a trace would be like individual um, individual you know, event or like um, piece of, of the whole request. Uh, so if we have a request jumping from resume to core API, for example, we have um, one span for what's happening in the resume sub and separate span for uh, what's happening in the core APIs uh, app. So are these um, different spans? Here? These are different spans and right. they have same trace ID. So this is one trace. Very cool. And then we can see, I guess, the, the destination for this. Was, I mean, it was a post handled by core API on port 9080. I guess is this this is the the URL to which it was sent, right? The the destination mm. URL. Mm. And it was yes. sent to slash applicants. Yeah, and so on and so forth. I'm not quite sure why I can't scroll right, but maybe I can do that. There we go. And then mm -hmm. I can see everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and it gives us all this timing information as well, right? So if there were lots of different yes. hops, lots of different spans, we'd be able to see, you know, if there was some latency, you know, mm -hmm. in one particular hop in that. Um... Yeah, so here we see that actually, like, uh, the core API um, span is almost as long as the resume one. Right. So it that. that um, it's actually core API when the time is spent. Uh, not um, there is not that much happening like in resumes outside of core API uh, call. Yeah, that's super cool. I like this. It's very. I love the way that we can jump from yeah. you know the, the the graph to the individual queries. That's really cool. So let's see if there's anything else in here. We've looked at mousing over and clicking on tempo. Uh, oh, that's interesting. A trace where a request failed and was retried and succeeded the second time. That's pretty cool. I guess you can see the... Yeah, so this the, all metadata that we saw in like this, this whole long list uh, in, in a trace, uh, it can also contain information about errors. Um, so, so this is very useful. Then we can um, like 
filter by um, on the error request and investigate why they failed. So I think, I, I mean, I've been talking quite a bit recently about the use of sidecars and mm -hmm. how eBPF basically enables us to introduce lots of tooling, including things like observability tooling, without needing to inject sidecars. And I think this is just one of the amazing powers of eBPF that, you know, we can get all this data. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did have to have, the applications have to add these trace IDs if they want distributed tracing, right? Yes. So uh, what happens there, like under the hood, is that um, Hubble, which is part of the Selenium agent, uh, parses, mm, parses, it parses all the uh, packets that uh, are, are handled by, by Selenium. Um, and it also parses the layer seven data. Mm -hmm. um, that includes tracing data. So. Uh, when we have application instrumented with tracing, the trace ID and this other metadata would be uh, typically propagated through HTTP headers. And uh, have a, if the application is traced with, uh, there's a standard, a trace context uh, standard for, um, for, Which is for tracing nowadays. Putting uh, this the header somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, this is uh, parsed from, from an HTTP header. Couple basically passes the, the headers, finds if there is trace ID there, and uh, it includes trace ID in Hubble flows and also in metrics produced. So Very good. nice. All right, so I think we can safely say that that demo worked, which is fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to Chance, who did a lot of work putting that together. Yeah. I think. So, great, I'm gonna... Um, just remove my screen. Did you want to show, because I think you've also been working on the Cilium plugin. Yes, uh, I will share my screen share. now. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see my screen? Uh, there it is. Okay, okay. great. So, um, what we've been working on as part of Grafana partnership is a plugin for uh, for Grafana. So uh, maybe I will uh, just quickly click through it. Um, we have uh, in um, one second in Grafana um, configuration we define data sources, and uh, there are a few that are like built into Grafana. So with Grafana installation, you just can configure them. For example, Prometheus uh, or Tempo, uh, we talked about Loki, it's Grafana product for locks. Um, so we can configure this like standard data sources and you can add um, additional ones. Uh, you can install additional data sources through plugins. And we developed such plugin for Cilium or Hubble, yeah, the, the, the terminology here is <laughs> sometimes hard, but like, yeah, we, this is basically the, um, our data source plugin for, um, for Hubble metrics and Hubble flows. Um, so yeah, we configured this uh, plugin and let's try to use this. Uh, when we, uh, here's, this is the Grafana Explorer view. So uh, not a dashboard, but like a view, we can experiment. Um, it also can be used in the dashboard, dashboard, but yeah, here we will experiment a bit. Uh, we can use just Cilium as a data source. And- So is the idea that you would you would yeah. kind of explore the view that you want in, in this, and then when you found what you want, you could sort of save that to your dashboard? Yes. Yeah. So, so in a dashboard, it's just sometimes um, sometimes it's more convenient to experiment in in such a view. Uh, yeah. So this this view has uh, has limitations. Like for example, we we don't use visualization here. We have like the default visualization uh, only. But yeah, it's it's very powerful for experimenting and like you know investigating. For example, when you are not sure uh, what exactly you want to visualize yet. Okay, so we use we are using Cilium uh, plugin as our data source, and what it does here it 
queries individual Hubble flows. So we are querying individual flows and displaying them as a table. Uh, this is quite a big table, so it's it's white. It's um, because flows are flows are like very white events. There's all information about wow. uh, yeah all. Uh, layer three, four, and seven details. So they are very white. And yeah, it's maybe not like um, convenient to look at such a white table, but if we use this plugin in the dashboard, we can actually uh, filter, uh, like hide some of the columns and transform them so that uh, we can visualize only information we need, not like all the details. Uh, from from every single flow, um, yeah. So there are, um, of course, like all the all the details that every flow has, like uh, IPs, all Kubernetes metadata. Uh, here, for example, flow uh, layer for details are um, contain TCP flags. If this is a TCP flow for layer seven, uh, is will we find layer seven details here? Oh. Okay, uh, layer seven details are empty if this is not a layer seven flow, uh, okay. but we will contain, uh, they contain things like um, method, um, HTTP method, URL, um, layer seven protocol, uh, headers, et cetera, et cetera. So like all the details that we, we could probably need to, we could possibly need to, to investigate things. Um, yeah, one interesting thing that oh, we just talked about tracing, and uh, what we added to Hubble Flows as part of this partnership, as I mentioned, is a trace ID. So uh, some of these flows should contain a trace ID. Um, if we find this column, will we find this column now? Uh, I don't see, I don't see it here. No. Okay, but we can uh, we can try to filter uh, flows first. Maybe that would be more convenient because um, here we have filters for flows uh, mm -hmm. as we normally would investigate them uh, before we, we implemented that uh, with uh, Hubble UI or Hubble CLI, uh, and. Now we can also uh, investigate flows and filter them with uh, with this Grafana plugin. So uh, we can try to filter by, for example, protocol. Um, let's say HTTP. Uh -huh. Aha. Okay. Oh, and suddenly we have a trace ID. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, in the like when uh, Grafana plugin loaded. Uh, at the beginning, like the, I think it just loaded the latest available flows. It, this view didn't contain any HTTP flows, but uh, now we have on the HTTP flows, they contain trace ID. And we can also filter flows by trace ID. So here in this, um, in this view, we can see all flows from this individual trace. Uh, in this case, there are not many. Just two. Uh, Is it probably yeah. a request and a response? I think. Uh, yeah, I think that that probably would be it. Yeah, just looking at that source and destination IP address, though. So, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Here. Yeah, yeah. 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 So this would be. Yeah. So so this is um, like the trivial trivial trace. With, yeah. Uh, well, request. Uh, yeah, but in general, we we are able to. Um, yeah, we can check uh, a different one if it would be more interesting or... Uh, yeah, let's try a different one. Okay, this is also like... Huh. <laughs> yeah, there um, there should be some some uh, more interesting um, traces, but but yeah. Uh, oh, this that is what one we can that says it. E46, there's at least three of them. Yeah, that might be good. Say this. Oh yeah, yeah. There are two requests in that case. So uh, right, uh, yeah. This one. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, we can have fit that. Um, so 
we um, we can like there are, these are not all Hubble filters yet, but uh, a few of them we can filter by things like uh, verdict. So mm -hmm. we can, for example, um, filter by dropped uh, flows. So that would be and policy can... policy verdict where your network yeah. policy says. I want to drop these packets. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We can see there are no dropped flows, which is great. That means that we configured our network policies correctly. Uh, but yeah, but I, I'm using uh, that filter very often to like configure my network policies. Uh, <laughs> just you know, deploying things and checking if um, if there are any dropped flows, and if there are, then I'm adjusting policies. Uh, so yeah. So this is. Um, very useful. Uh, yeah, some uh, Kubernetes metadata like uh, namespace and workload. So it would be workload uh, deployment and you can type the name of the deployment. Um, yeah, so uh, this is like the table with row flows. And then um, what we showed earlier in the dashboard were uh, Hubble HTTP metrics. Mm -hmm. So Hubble HTTP, HTTP metrics are basically aggregating HTTP flows into like a time series mm. in the Prometheus format or open metrics format. So this uh, this is like more granular view. Um, but what, uh, what can we also do with metrics is we implemented this service map. So I will run the query now. And, oh, I think I need to uh, choose filters. So um, I will choose, um, let's say, alter demo as source namespace. And yeah, and we got a service map. So yeah. this service map uses node graph visualization. Uh, and it also uses metrics as like the under underlying data. Uh, but what we do with these metrics, uh, we don't visualize them as time series on, on a graph. Uh, like this, this would be the basic visualization for um, metrics, but instead we process this metric metrics to generate a service graph. So we uh, find like source and destination labels and we aggregate all these metrics to draw a graph of which services are connecting to to, uh, to each other services. Um, so that's similar to what happens in the Hubble UI, right? Yes, yes. Just but in I Hubble guess... UI, uh, we, we do that from flows okay. directly. Okay. Here we do that from metrics. Oh, um, so, so that allows us to, um, yeah, with, with metrics, we, uh, we have less granularity, but if we are generating like a service map, we, we, we are aggregating things anyway. So like we, we don't need that granularity. Uh, and doing that from metrics allows us for uh, historical view, for example, because in uh, Hubble, in the open source version of, of Hubble, um, we have like recent um, recent flows, but mm -hmm. we will only have as much as we can fit in the Hubble org buffer. Uh, aggregating it as metrics and storing it in uh, Prometheus um, allows us for like having a big, bigger retention. So, uh, we can generate this service map also from like historical data. So see how service looked a week. Uh, so how traffic in the namespace looked a week ago and compare it, it to how it looks today. Oh yeah. 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 Very cool. So yeah. what else is coming? What else are you and the rest of the team working on for so, um, more on the dashboards or? <laughs> releasing this plugin. Okay. Yeah. So this this was a preview of the plugin. It's not actually available in Grafana catalog yet. Um, but yeah, it will be soon. So uh, this is what we are working on, uh, releasing this plugin. Um, so that it's available. And 
Um, in this plugin, there, uh, yeah, that we will like up several features, like um, I think other filters to to flows could be useful. Um, I think. Uh, service service maps um, also could be filtered by by other um like workloads apart from uh on the nice space uh yeah so so we are working on, on adding more features to that um another thing is um yeah as you mentioned dashboard uh i think that it's uh, we, we are planning to uh to define like an example dashboard using uh, this plugin uh, that will um, allow to um, also link uh, what we see in service map to like more granular view of the flows. Right. Individual right. Flows. Yeah. And, and just to check that I've completely understood this because you know we've seen two different versions here of data that looks fairly similar. I think what we showed in the first demo is derived from Prometheus metrics. But what's happening with the Cilium metrics, oh, sorry, the Cilium plugin is it's pulling it directly from Hubble. Is that right? Uh, both from Hubble and Prometheus. So okay. th this view, uh, yeah, this, this view is from Hubble. These are individual flows. This view, I need to click run query to generate it. Uh, this is from metrics. This is not from individual flows. OK. Okay, so it's a combination of the two. Yeah, yeah. So if you go to like, um, I think in, in the configuration of the data source, um, we like define here uh, Prometheus data source and also Hubble mm. URL. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Very nice. Well, so I suppose if people want to try this out for themselves, there is that uh, GitHub repo that we've just walked through that people can walk through themselves and, and maybe try it out with their own applications. Because if instead of deploying that tenant's job, you, you deployed it against your own applications, you'd see your own metrics and that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we'll post all the links to those demos and the blog posts that we talked about we'll post them all into the show notes uh, which you'll be able to get i never know it's that direction yeah that direction on the screen uh, <laughs> hackmd.io slash at echo dash live and there'll be show notes for this particular episode we also put them in the github repo for echo as well so if you do have any questions please feel free to reach out. I think Cilium Slack is, is the best place to, to find us. Anna, you'll be, you're on the Cilium Slack as well, right? Yeah, I'm on the Cilium Slack as well. Uh, we also have a Grafana channel there. Uh, so if you have like questions about specific, um, specific to couple Grafana integration or the plugin we are working on, I guess this is a good place to, to ask them. And also there's a Hubble channel, I think, for, for general Hubble issues perfect brilliant well thanks so much anna for taking the time today uh i guess Thank before you. this before this goes out we'll uh, we'll get to have a fun time at the offsite i assume you're coming to the offsite yes yeah <laughs> i bet we'll have a great time wonderful all right so if you've been watching thank you so much for joining us and i look forward to seeing you again live in the not too distant future bye yeah thank you